I've been in need of some new zero clearance throat plates for the table saws. And I've wanted to make several so that I have one for the blades that I use the most on the two saws. I've also had an idea of putting a little fin into the slot that the blade fits into so it works like a live knife. That little fin would, would be a part of the throat plate. I think what would make that nice is that each throat plate and each little fin would work with each blade specifically. So when I change the blade, I just change the throat plate. Now doing it this way, the little riving knife won't angle with the blade if I angle the blade. Now if I made a specific zero clearance, 45 degree angled throat plate with a fin in it, that would work. But for now, I'll just make these for vertically oriented blades. So I have this piece of oak I got like six months ago to do this project. I'm finally getting around to it. So I'm cutting this piece up into the shapes that I'll need. So I'll, I'll join an edge. Now the, the first kind of main cut that I'll make is that I'll cut it to the width. So it'll fit within the, the space for the throat plate. So I can use the existing throat plate to find that width between the fence and the blade. Now with the width set, I can face joint and then plane the pieces down to the thickness that they'll need to be to fit within the space for the throat plate. So it was a matter of planing down to where it was flush with the existing throat plate. Then with the thickness and the width set, I can cut the shape of the two different throat plates into those pieces of wood. The Paramatic 72 has kind of a long rectangular throat plate, and then the Paramatic 66 has a shorter throat plate with, with rounded ends. So I can just cut those shapes out. With the first pass on the bandsaw, I'll leave them a little bit big. On the disc sander, I can sand right up to the line that I've made from the, from the shape of the throat plate and get it perfect. Now before I start trying to fit it in the table saw, and I've learned this from past experience, it's good to drill out the finger holes in the plate so that you can pull it out once you fit it in. So with some, with some sanding and some fitting, they, they fit in nicely. I can hold the throat place in place and down with the fence. And then with the blade turned on, I can raise the blade up through the throat plate and that'll cut the slot for the blade. Now what I want to make are these little fins that'll go behind the blade in the new plates. So I cut some thin strips and managed to get some of those to be the right width to fit within the slot for the blade. What'll be nice about this is each of the little fins in its particular throat plate will be the width of the blade. So there won't be any play between the cut being put into the piece of wood that's being cut and the riving knife. Now what I need to do is cut the back half of the slot that the little fin will fit into. And it needs to line up perfectly with the slot that was cut for the blade. But it's pretty straightforward. Once I have that slot cut, I can figure out where to put the little fins. Since I had several of these that I was making, I thought I would try some different ways of doing the fins. And the, the first one was just to make a solid piece so that the, the wood of the little vertical fin would run continuously from the blade to the back of the throat plate. I found pretty quickly this was going to be a hard way to do this as gluing all these pieces in and keeping them in line and square with the throat plate was doable but challenging, but it worked in the end. And the other issue is I've got grain running in two different directions for a fairly long distance, which may mean that this isn't going to really last for, for all that long. So then what I did is I rose the blade up through the vertical fins to kind of cut a space for the blade as well. It seems to be square enough to the table that it works. The second one that I did, I realized what I could do is sort of sharpen the nose of the little fin so that the wood slot coming at it from the blade will, will go around the, the fin easier. And what I wanted to do was to not make it a continuous vertical fin, but to have a fin 
near the blade and then a fin towards the back of the throat plate, which is really where you need them with a space between those two. Then I use the disc sander to shape the fin in the back to kind of fit with the shape of the throat plate. So this setup was easier to make. It took less wood and it seemed to work a little better. The fins were, were snug within the kerf of the cut, but they weren't real tight. So the wood moved through the saw nicely. What I've noticed with this, and I know that the riving knife is supposed to help keep the piece of wood straight as it goes through the blade, but what I've noticed with these little fins is that they hold the wood to the fence, which is, I guess, what they're supposed to do, but I didn't really realize that so much until I started actually using it. On one level, safer, which is sort of the point, but it also keeps your cut straighter because it keeps the stock up against the fence. The test with these will be to see how long they last because they are kind of delicate. Those were the throat plates for the Paramatic 72. So now I'll make one for the 66. I see this saw being more used for cutting up plywood, so it won't need to be quite so tall. And I'll use the same two fin design, which seems to work pretty well. And it's glued up. I can sand it to shape. Then run some plywood through the saw, and it seems to work. So this is a pretty simple thing to do, but hopefully it makes the saws a lot safer and I'll get much straighter cuts. <laughs> Thanks for watching.